हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू ई पी जी पाठशाला आई एम डॉक्टर एन पी सिंह फ्रॉम सेंटर फॉर बायोटेक्नोलॉजी महर्षि दयानंद यूनिवर्सिटी रोहतक टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट ए मॉड्यूल मैनुपलेशन ऑफ जीन एक्सप्रेशन इन यूक्रियाट्स अंडर द पेपर एनिमल सेल बायोटेक्नोलॉजी सो स्टूडेंट्स लेट अस सी वट आर द ऑब्जेक्टिव ऑफ दिस मॉड्यूल वट वी विल लर्न out of this module module we will learn what is the significance of dna sequencing what is the evolution of dna sequencing techniques latest development in sequencing techniques and what are the ethical issues related to this aspect expression of cloned gene in eukaryotes has certain advantages the most important being the ability of eukaryotic organisms to bring about post translational modifications like glycosylation phosphorylation correct disulfide bond formation proteolytic cleavage etc eukaryotic expression system produce stable and biologically active proteins this is in contrast to the prokaryotic expression of cloned genes bacteria are idle host for the amplification of dna molecules they can also serve as factories for the production of wide range of prokaryotic and eukaryotic proteins however bacteria lack the necessary enzymes to carry out post translational modifications such as the specific cleavage of polypeptides and the attachment of carbohydrate units thus many eukaryotic genes can be correctly expressed only in eukaryotic host cells the introduction of recombinant dna molecules into cells of higher organisms can also be source of insight into how their genes are organized and ex expressed how are genes turned on and off in embryological development how does a fertilized egg give rise to an organism with highly differentiated cells that are organized in space and time these questions can now be fruitful approached by expressing foreign genes in mammalian cells recombinant dna molecules can be introduced into animal cells in several ways in one of the method the foreign dna molecule precipitated by calcium phosphate are taken up by animal cells a small fraction of imported dna becomes stably integrated into the chromosomal dna the efficiency of incorporation is low but the method is useful because it is easy to apply in another method dna is micro injected into cells a fine tip of 0.1 micrometer in diameter glass micropipette containing a solution of foreign dna is inserted into a nucleus a skilled investigator can inject hundreds of cells per hour about 2% of injected mouse cells are viable and contain the new gene in a third method viruses are used to bring new genes into animal cells the most effective vectors are retroviruses retroviruses replicate through dna intermediates the reverse of the normal flow of information a striking feature of the life cycle of a retrovirus is that the double helical dna form of its genome produced by action of reverse transcriptase becomes randomly incorporated into host chromosomal dna this dna version of viral genome is called as pro viral dna it can be efficiently expressed by host cell and replicated along with normal cellular dna retroviruses do not usually kill their hosts foreign genes have been efficiently introduced into mammalian cells by infecting them with vectors derived from moloney murin leukemia virus which can accept inserts as long as 6 kb kilo base pair 
some genes introduced by this retrovirus vectors into the genome of a transformed host cell are efficiently expressed. In general, the eukaryotic expression of cloned gene is quite comparable to that occur in the prokaryotes. However, from the technical perspectives, it is more difficult to conduct experiments with eukaryotic cells. Many a times, vectors with two distinct origins of applications are used. They serve as shuttle vectors and function in prokaryotic as well as eukaryotic holes. The insertion of a foreign DNA into bacterial and yeast cells is referred to as transformation. The term transfection is used for the introduction of a foreign DNA into animal cells. The insert DNA in the eukaryotic cells may be associated with vector or integrated into the host chromosomal DNA. Saccharomyces cerevisiae, the yeast in expressing cloned genes. The common yeast Saccharomyces cerevisiae is widely used as a host for the expression of cloned genes. There are many justifiable reasons for its extensive use. It is a single celled and can be easily grown organism. Its biochemistry, genetics, and physiology are quite known. It has a naturally occurring plasmid and strong promoters for efficient expression. It can bring about many post translational changes in proteins. The secreted recombinant proteins can be easily isolated since very few host proteins are secreted. The US Food and Drug Administration has certified Saccharomyces cerevisiae as generally recognized as a safe organism. As such, Saccharomyces cerevisiae has been in use for several decades in baking and brewery industries. Biotechnologists work quite comfortably with this yeast to produce a large number of recombinant proteins like insulin, A1 antitrypsin, hepatitis B virus, surface antigens, platelet-derived growth factors, fibroblast growth factors, and HIV-1 antigens. These products are in use as diagnostic agents, vaccines, and therapeutic agents. Vectors used for Saccharomyces cerevisiae, these are plasmid vectors, integrating vectors, and yeast artificial chromosome vectors. Plasmid vectors. Among pl vectors, plasmids with single clone genes are widely used. Manipulation with growth conditions increase the vector stability and expression efficiency. Use of tandem gene arrays has not met the success since they are unstable. Integrating vectors, they are basically the integration of cloned genes with the chromosomal genes. These are not frequently used since the protein production is very low. The yeast artificial chromosomes. It is a fragment of yeast DNA that will accept a foreign DNA of about 250 to 500 kilobase in length. In fact, the yeast DNA is only about 1% of the total DNA, which however is very important since it contains three essential genes required for replication. These are genes for telomeres that protects DNA from nuclease degradation and thus maintains the stability. Centromere that forms spindle during the cell division and the third one, the origin of replication where DNA polymerase initiates replication. Yeast artificial chromosome behaves just like a chromosome and replicates. 
the construction of yeast artificial chromosome includes two opposite ends of yeast chromosome namely the left telomer and the left right telomer the left telomer is then attached to a centromere a large segment of foreign dna is added and all the three are ligated unlike the plasmid vectors the stability of gap increases as the size of insert dna increases yeast artificial chromosomes have not been used for commercial production of recombinant proteins however they have been employed successfully for physical mapping of genomic dnas particularly in human genome projects post translational modifications by saccharomyces cerevisiae the heterologous proteins synthesized by saccharomyces cerevisiae undergo post translational changes while they are being exported into the extracellular environment to facilitate protein secretion a single peptide is attached to the protein this protein is removed by the yeast endoprotease other yeast expression systems despite the very successful use of saccharomyces cerevisiae for generating recombinant proteins there are certain limitations these includes a very low or a limited yield difficulty in secretion of some proteins and hyperglycosylation attempts are being made to explore the utility of other yeast for the production of hepatitis b virus surface antigens and bovine lysozymes the yeast hensinola polymorpha is employed for the synthesis of alpha and beta globin chains hemoglobin insect cell expression systems cultured insect cells are in use for expressing cloned dnas buculovirus exclusively infects insect cells the dna of these viruses encode for several products and their productivity in cell is very high to extend of more than 10000 times compared to the mammalian cells besides carrying a large number of foreign genes the buculo viruses can effectively express and process the products formed another advantage with these viruses is that they cannot infect humans other vertebrates or plants thus buculo viruses are a safe vector now we will discuss polyhydrin gene of buculo virus the polyhydrin gene is responsible for the synthesis of a matrix protein polyhydrin this protein is synthesized in large quantities with buculo virus during the infection cycle polyhydrin protects the virus from being inactivated by environmental reagents the promoter of polyhydrin gene is very strong however the life cycle of buculo virus does not depends on the presence of this gene polyhydrin gene can be replaced by cloned gene and the genetically engineered buculo virus can infect and culture the insects isko repeat karna ek bar isi ko isi isi slide ko however the cycle of the buculo virus does not depend on the presence of this gene polyhydrin gene can be replaced by a cloned gene and genetically engineered buculo virus can infect the cultured insect cells the cloned gene expresses and large quantities of recombinant proteins are produced because of a close similarity in the post translational modification between the insects and mammals biologically active proteins can be produced by this approach by using buculo viruses as expression vector system a good number of mammalian and viral proteins 
have been synthesized. These are adenosine deaminase, alkaline phosphatase, amyloid precursor proteins, anthrax antigens, DNA polymerase alpha, erythropoietin, HIV-1 envelope proteins, interferons alpha and beta, interleukin-2, malaria proteins, pancreatic lipase, poliovirus proteins, rabies virus proteins, rhodopsin, simian rotavirus capsid antigen, tissue plasminogen activator. The most commonly used baculovirus is autograph California multiple nuclear polyhedrosis virus ACMNPV. It can grow on the insect cell lines, for example, derived from fall army worm and produce high level of polyhedrin or a recombinant protein. It consists of an E. coli based plasmid vector along with the DNA of Baculovirus. This is in turn has ACMNPV DNA, a polyhedrin promoter region, cloning site for the insect DNA and polyhedrin termination region. When the insect culture cells transferred with ACMNPV are mixed with transfer vector carrying a cloned gene, a double crossover occurs. The result is that the clone gene with polyhedrin promoter and termination sequences gets integrated into ACMNPV DNA. In this process, polyhedrin gene is lost. The recombinant virus containing cloned gene is isolated. The host insert culture cell on infection with recombinant virus produce heterologous proteins. A large number and a wide variety of recombinant proteins have been synthesized in various laboratories throughout the world. A majority of them have requisite post-translational modifications. Now we will discuss the modification in the production of recombinant buculoviruses. The original method of creating recombinant buculovirus has undergone several changes. Incorporation of a unique BSU-361 restriction endonuclease site on the polyhedral gene increases the yield of recombinant buculovirus production to about 30% from the normal 1%. Basmid, this is a shuttle vector for, for E. coli and insect cell buculovirus. Construction of a recombinant basmid is a novel approach to carry out all the genetic manipulation including the expression of Baculovirus vector in E. coli. Use of yeast cells. The genetic manipulation of ACMNPV genome can be done in yeast cells with yeast insect shuttle vectors. Then the recombinant Baculovirus is introduced into the insect cells. Mammalian cell expression vectors. Mammalian expression vectors are useful for the production of specific and authentic recombinant proteins for use as therapeutic agents. In addition, they are also helpful for studying the function and regulation of mammalian genes. In general, the mammalian expression vectors are quite comparable to other eukaryotic expression vectors. However, large-scale productions of recombinant proteins with engineered mammalian cells is costly. Eukaryotic expression systems. Eukaryotic expression systems include prokaryotic promoters, termination and polyadenylation signals, eukaryotic selection markers, origin of replication in the eukaryotic cells, origin of replication in SHA coli and SHA coli selectable marker. Mammalian vector contains a eukaryotic origin of replication from an animal virus such as 
CMEM virus 40 and a probiotic origin of replication from Escherichia coli. The mammalian vector has a multiple cloning site and a selectable marker gene. Both of them are under the control of eukaryotic promoter and polyadenylation sequences. Markers for mammalian expression vectors. There are several markers in use for the selection of transformed mammalian cells. The bacterial genes that encodes for neomycin phosphotransferase is frequently used. The other markers are the genes that encode for the enzyme dihydrofolate reductase and glutamine synthase. There are three main techniques for the manipulation of gene expression in eukaryotes. Currently, RNA interference is very much in the limelight. Antisense oligonucleotide technology is undergoing a resurgence as a result of improvements in the chemistry of these molecules. Designed transcription factors offer a powerful and increasingly convenient strategy for either up or down regulation of targeted genes. Antisense oligonucleotides. The ability of antisense oligonucleotides to suppress gene expression are discovered more than 25 years ago. For a decade or more, Thereafter, antisense was viewed as a promising tool for selective gene regulation in experimental and therapeutic situations. However, despite massive efforts, the therapeutic potential of antisense oligonucleotides has yet to be fully achieved, and their use as routine laboratory tools has encountered difficulties. The basis of these problems lie mainly with the chemistry of early first generation antisense compounds, which are now being superseded by newer of second and third generation molecules with improved characteristics. The basic mechanism and the role of chemical modifications. Antisense oligonucleotides base pair with mRNA and pre-mRNAs and can potentially interfere with several steps of RNA processing and message translation including splicing, polyadenylation, export, stability and protein translation. However, the two most powerful and widely used antisense strategies are the degradation of mRNA and pre-mRNA via RNAsH and the alteration of splicing via targeting aberrant splice junctions. Efficacy and selectivity in pharmacological terms Efficacy relates to the magnitude of the effect of on the target, whereas selectivity relates to the uniqueness of the effect on the target versus non-target entities. It is obviously desirable to use antisense oligonucleotides with the highest efficacy and greatest selectability possible so as to attain a maximal effect on the expression of the target gene with minimal off-target or other side effects. High efficacy is often associated with high potency that is with effects as low concentrations. High affinity base pairing is an important contribution to potency SI RNAs. 
the explosive growth of studies on RNA interference has provided a fascinating picture of how RNA molecules can participate in multiple endogenous gene regulatory processes. Exogenously introduced long double stranded RNA is an effective tool for gene silencing in a variety of lower organisms. However, in mammals, long double stranded RNAs elicit highly toxic responses that are related to the factor of viral infection and interferon productions. To avoid this, initiated the use of siRNAs composed of 19 Mer duplexes with 5 dash phosphates and 2 base 3 dash overhangs on each stand, which selectively degrade targeted mRNAs upon introduction into cells. Basic mechanism First, dicer. An RNA's three type enzyme cleaves double stranded RNAs to 21 to 23 mer SI RNA segments. Then these segments RNA induces silencing complex, unwinds the RNA duplex, pairs one strand with a complementary region in a cognate mRNA, and initiates cleavage at a site 10 nucleotide upstream of the 5 dash end of the SI RNA strand. This process takes place in the cytoplasm. In mammals, the argonaut 2 protein seems to be the key component of the RISC complex responsible for mRNA cleavage. Short Chemically synthesized siRNAs in the 19 and 22 mer range do not require dicer step and can enter this machinery directly. Efficacy and selectivity RNA interference in lower organisms is incredibly potent. With the introduction of a few molecules of double stranded RNA, leading to virtually complete gene silencing. However, in mammals, siRNA is considerably less robust. Although there have been reports of siRNA effects of mammalian cells at picomolar concentrations, this seems exceptional and most studies find significant target knockdown in the 10 to 100 nano range. Similarly, although some studies have reported virtual ablation of endogenous target messages, particularly when viral vectors were used, it is more common to observe a 40 to 90 percent knockdown of messages and proteins when siRNA oligolympotides are transfected. One very appealing feature of siRNA technology is that it apparently is possible to efficiently knock down more than one target at the same time. Design transcription factors. Transcription factors are typically modular proteins containing a DNA binding domain that is responsible for the specific recognition of base sequences and one or more effector domains that can activate or repress transcription. Transcription factors interact with chromatin and recruit protein complexes that serve as co-activators or co-repressors. Important co-activators include the CBT T300 complex that is involved in transcription activation accompanied by histone modification, the chromatin remodeling complex, and the mediator complex that links transcription factors to the basal transcription machinery. 
core pressures include SIN3 and new RD complexes, which contain histone deacetylases that convert nucleosome to a transcriptionally incompetent state. Zinc finger selection strategy Zinc finger modules with model DNA recognition abilities can be obtained by peptide combinatorial library strategies such as phase display. Typically, three zinc fingerprints are displayed on the face surface, two of them are fixed, whereas the third is randomized at some or all of the two residues at positions 1 to 6. Phases are then screened against an oligonucleotide containing the target sequence that is immobilized on a support. Phase display is a powerful strategy because it allows the screening of large libraries. However, the screening process involves make oligonucleotides rather than chromosomal DNA. Efficacy and selectability. Properly designed multi zinc finger transcription factors can be very efficacious. Thus, more than 90% reductions in endogenous messages or and protein levels have been obtained by using designed repressors. A comparison of the potency of designed transcription factors with antisense or SIR and nucleotides is difficult because unlike oligonucleotides, transcription factors are expressed endogenously from vectors. However, design transcription factors with binding affinities in the sub-nanomolar range are readily attained, suggesting that rather low concentration with the cell can produce strong effects. The binding affinity of this transcription factor to its DNA target can be substantially altered by a single base change in the target. However, some binding to imperfect sites may be tolerated. So, students, in this particular module, we learned at the most basic level, choices can be made based on the intended use of these buccoloviruses, designed transcription factors and antisense via splice modul modulation can either upregulate or downregulate gene expression. SIRNA is restricted to the downregulation according to the ease of use, especially for the novice. SIRNA is clearly the best choice. Cost is another important consideration on a molar basis. SIRNAs are substantially more expensive than antisense oligonucleotides. So, selectivity design transcription factor is best choice. Although there is no magic bullet for gene regulation, a careful and skeptical approach to use antisense SIRNA or designed transcription factor may provide the investigator with powerful and selective tool to study the role of individual gene in cell biological processes. Thank you.